This video was made possible by Brilliant. Start learning intuitively with Brilliant for 20% off by being one of the first 424 people to sign up at brilliant.org HAI. This is you, in a plane, in 1922. You're probably wondering, what am I doing in a boat with a lawnmower strapped on the front? And why if I look at Google Maps in 96 years can I find giant arrows in places like Shelbyville, Indiana, or Potter, Nebraska, or Bunkerville, Nevada? It's the 1920s. These aeroplanes were just about as safe as eating gas station sushi, but it wasn't the racking up medical debt in the hospital from tapeworms kind of unsafe, it was the going off course, running out of fuel, crash landing, and fighting grizzly bears kind of unsafe. As tasty as bear meat is, the world was trying to turn itself into a less die-y place which required fewer pilots getting lost. Once planes had existed long enough for people to notice that pilots regularly stopped existing when flying at night, the general consensus shifted to that it probably wasn't a good idea to fly at night. People were happy with that decision, but then they weren't because of airmail. Here's a fun fact. On the very first manned balloon flight in the US in 1793, the pilot carried a letter from George Washington to the owner of whichever property the balloon happened to land on, which made this the very first flight in the US, the first airmail delivery in the US. I just thought you should know that. I think you should also know that juice has just as much sugar in it as soda. So how you make airmail is you take mail and put it on planes, and planes go fast while trains go slow, so airmail is fast and people like fast, so people liked airmail. Soon after its introduction, demand took off. Like a... How airmail worked in its infancy was essentially that a plane would take off in the morning, fly as fast as possible as far as possible, then when it got dark, the plane would land, a train would take the mail as far as possible during the night, then in the morning, it would be loaded onto a plane again. Using this system, a letter could get from New York to San Francisco in 79 hours. But that wasn't good enough. After all, the regular train route across the country took only 108 hours, and so the president, Warren G. Harding, threatened to cut the program's funding. So airmail needed to get faster, which meant planes had to fly at night, which required fewer dead pilots. The average airmail pilot died after just 900 hours flying, largely because of the lack of good navigational equipment, so they needed to find a way to find their way. First they considered GPS, but then they came to realize that satellites wouldn't exist for another 40 years. You would think they could use maps, but aviation maps didn't exist since like two people flied, and the terrible maps they had were even more terrible at night when pilots couldn't see anything. Two-way portable radios also weren't a thing yet, so they came to the more practical conclusion building thousands of giant arrows stretched all across the country just pointing the way. Now, this sounds like an exaggeration, but no, they really did build thousands of giant arrows stretched all across the country just pointing the way. Along with the arrows were 50-foot lighted towers that could be seen from afar. These structures were built an average of 10 to 15 miles apart, and then every second or third tower would have an emergency landing site right next to it. The government built these all the way from New York to San Francisco, which turned airmail into a 24-hour operation where pilots would, at night, just follow the lights. Crazily enough, flying more hours per day led to faster delivery times, so what was previously a 79-hour, very deadly trip from New York to San Francisco now became a 35-hour, slightly less deadly jaunt across the country. It also cut down on cost. Sending a letter in those 35 hours across the country then only cost the equivalent of $3.50. What a deal. But you know what's also a good deal? Wait, it's not time yet. But here's a question. Is this an airmail pilot or a Japanese teenager waiting outside the Supreme store in his latest streetwear outfit? Genuine question. This whole lighted giant aero system was so successful that government officials started to think about building a version across the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans using floating barges. Eventually, though, technologies like radar and GPS made these beacons obsolete, and many were removed during World War II to prevent enemy bombers from using them to navigate the US. But all across the country, these concrete arrows remain. In history, they pointed east towards safety, towards the destination. But today, the few crumbled remains of these arrows serve as a reminder, pointing away from where no man or woman should ever step foot. California. If you want to anger 39.5 million people, don't do it by insulting their state. Do it by outsmarting them. Let me spell it out for you simply. It starts with an I and ends with a T. And you know how you know how to spell? You don't have the exact combination of letters for every word memorized in your head. You know how to spell because you intuitively know which letters correspond to which sounds. Brilliant takes that same concept of intuitive knowledge and applies it to other concepts like physics, number theory, astronomy, and more. Instead of learning things, you learn how to learn things which leads to learning them better. The best part is that you can try out Brilliant courses for free and then upgrade to premium for 20% off only by being one of the first 424 people to sign up at brilliant.org slash HAI.